Good morning and welcome to worship with us at Covenant Presbyterian DTC. I'm Pastor Barb and this is my last Sunday with you for the next month. I'm taking some time off just to rest and renew and I will be back with you on September 13th, I think, the weekend after Labor Day weekend. So you will be certainly in my thoughts while I'm away. We have a great lineup of preachers. Our director of youth and family ministries, Alex Sergio, will be preaching. Our parish associate, Steve Blacksock, has a couple Sundays. And on Labor Day weekend, we are going to be joined by none other than Lydia Nashongwe bringing us a message from Zimbabwe. So I hope you'll continue to tune into this YouTube channel for Sundays during August while I'm away. Um, hey, I also want you to know we have gotten feedback from some of you about really wanting an outdoor gathering. So our church leadership is taking a look at that for the Sunday in September when I'm back and we will, we will keep you posted. So for this morning, friends, let's join in our call to worship. Are any among us weary? Do we carry heavy burdens? Here's a place of rest. Here we encounter Christ's healing and grace. Are any among us anxious and scattered, needing a break from what life is? Here is a place of deep peace. In our worship, we meet the unhurried God. Are any among us feeling brittle or broken, thirsty for the good news? Here we encounter Jesus, the living water, tranquil and ever-present. Are any among us feeling hollow and empty, hungry for truth? Here we encounter Christ, the bread of life, nourishment for the journey. Do remember, friends, that today is Communion Sunday. So if you haven't gone into your kitchen and gotten uh, some bread or something to eat and something to drink, you can do that now and get ready for our shared sacrament together. i mm -hmm. 
together love me, all together work me, all together wonderful to me. Friends, let's come together in prayer. Precious God, surround us with your presence so we may breathe deeply of this moment and discover a fountain of joy, a river of light, a stream of hope. Precious God, come in word and silence, in song and prayer, and lead us to the heights of glory. Precious God, visit us now with your peace and power that make all things new. Renew the earth and renew us by your grace. In Jesus we pray, amen. Now it's time for Alex with something for our kids. Hey everyone, I wanted to come on and offer a quick update about what's happening in the month of August for children's videos. Um, as you may know, Barb is on vacation for some much needed time off and stress relief. That means I'll be covering some sermons and I'll be covering some call to worships um, and announcements and things like that. So to make those things happen, I'm going to step back from making children's videos um, for this month. But don't worry, we have a plan. Um, we're going to be showing uh, videos from the YouTube series, um, The Bible Project. And if you haven't heard about them, their goal is to use animation to communicate the Bible in a way that is accessible for as many people as possible. There's no paywall to jump through. They're really great and make some really high quality, well animated videos. So in place of our normal Grove videos, uh, next or this week, we're going to be showing um, their videos going through a very ancient prayer called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. They're going to be breaking down each one of these words to help us better understand um, how to love the Lord in this way. And keep in mind, uh, some of these, video these videos are not specifically for little children. Uh, maybe more in line for like 10 to 18 year olds. The information comes really fast. They go into the Hebrew. Uh, and use some phrases your kids may not be accustomed to. But I wanted to use these videos um, because one, the goal is not for your kid to get 100% of the, all the information uh, in their three to four minute videos. The goal is for your kids to be exposed to a topic and to see that topic unfold. And for you at home to have that conversation with your kid as they watch and afterwards. Um, the conversation around these topics is what's most important, and the videos will give you, as the guardians, as the parents, the resources you need to have that conversation. So, enjoy. Have fun pronouncing the different Hebrew words with your kids, and maybe take this time as a family to take to memorization the Shema, recite it before family dinners, before bed, whatever and whenever. Um, just work to engage with your kids on these videos. And without further ado, the first video in the series, The Bible Project. Enjoy. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Now the first word of the Shema is hear or listen, which in Hebrew is pronounced Shema. That's where the prayer gets its name. Now Shema is a really common word in the Hebrew Bible, and it's obvious why. Hearing is a very universal activity. It's usually connected with the ear, as in Proverbs chapter 20, ears that Shema and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Now that seems basic enough, but if you look at the other ways that Hebrew authors can use the word Shema, they use it to mean more than just let sound waves enter your ear. In Hebrew, Shema can also mean pay attention to or focus on. So when Leah, who wasn't loved by her husband Jacob, she has a son and she names him Simon, or in Hebrew, Shimon, because she says the Lord has Shamad 
that I am unloved. So Shema means to hear and to pay attention to and even more. It can also mean responding to what you hear. This is why so many of the cries for help in the book of Psalms begin with a call that God listen. Psalm 27 verse 7, Shema my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful, answer me. So asking God to Shema is at the same time asking God to act, to do something. It's similar to when God asks people to listen. Like when the people of Israel come to Mount Sinai, God says, If you Shema me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Now, there's a couple interesting things about this verse in Exodus. In Hebrew, the word Shema is repeated twice in this sentence to give it emphasis. If you Shema Shema, meaning listen closely. But also notice that from God's point of view, listening is basically the same as keeping the covenant. So when God asks the people to Shema, what he means is that they listen and obey. And that's the last fascinating thing about Shema. In ancient Hebrew, there is no separate word for obey, meaning to carry out the wishes of someone who knows better than you or is in authority over you. So in the Bible, if you want to say, I will listen and do what you say, you use the single word Shema. In Hebrew, listening and doing are two sides of the same coin. This is why later in Israel's history, when the people were breaking their covenant promises to God, the Hebrew prophets would say things like, they have ears, but they're not listening. The Israelites, of course, could hear just fine, but they weren't actually listening or else they would act differently. And so in the end, listening in the Bible is about giving respect to the one speaking to you and doing what they say. Real listening takes effort and action, and that's the Hebrew word Shema. Hey guys, thanks for watching The Bible Project. We hope this video was helpful. It's part of a brand new series called Word Studies and we hope to make a whole bunch more. We believe the Bible is a unified story that leads to Jesus and has profound wisdom for the modern world. You can watch all of our videos here on YouTube and check us out on our website, thebibleproject.com. Thanks.
stand against and I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names when nothing can stand against oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name Our scripture for today from the book of James chapter 1 is all about living through hard times and making the most of it. Sounds like a perfect scripture for right now, doesn't it? Because we're in an unprecedented hard time. This pandemic has made life hard on the entire world, uh, hitting some countries harder than others, hitting individuals and families at different levels of hardship, we're all feeling it in some way. I've, I've had a hard week. I'm just gonna tell you like it is, friends. On Monday, I was in the church office and I came home just feeling crummy. My throat was sore and, and swollen shut. I had a headache, I just didn't feel good. Um, so I, I just came home and I lay down and this lasted for several days. I've been sleeping 12 hours a night, and I talked with my doctor on Wednesday. Um, I didn't have a fever, and she said, Barb, it's really unlikely that it's COVID. She said, but I think for your peace of mind and those around you, you should get a test. So I was able to get in and get a test that afternoon, and I'm still waiting on the results. I am feeling so much better. Hope you can tell. I'm feeling better. But it was... It was scary. And I thought, this is what we're all living with. You know, you get a sniffle or a sore throat and there's this fear and anxiety like, oh my gosh, what if, you know, what if it's the coronavirus? Who have I seen? Who might have I infected? And what if this gets worse? And it's this whole layer of fear and hardship that everyone in the world is living with right now. This week also at my house, my sweet dog got sick. And after a very expensive vet visit today, we still are not sure what's wrong with him. Here he is. All he wants to do, there's Indigo. He has a really upset stomach and all the symptoms. And uh, we're waiting on some blood tests to come back for him, you know. And the other thing I'm experiencing, and maybe you are, it's really hard to read the news. I don't watch it anymore. I just, I can't have the news on in the house because of the stress it creates. And I find now there's so many headlines that are distressing about so many things that I'll read a headline and I can tell immediately I'll start to get a, a, a tension headache and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not reading this today. Uh, and it's tough because as a pastor, uh, you know, a, a leader of a community, I want to be informed. I want to be up on what's happening. And yet it's, it's stressing me out. Maybe you are experiencing some or all of these things. And I know that, that many of you are facing other hardships right now. Some of you have ongoing health issues that are unrelated to COVID that are extremely difficult right now. Some of you are lonely, like my mother-in-law Rose, you know, she's she's high risk. She's home. She has honestly barely seen anyone since March and it's hard. The isolation and the loneliness are really tough. People have lost jobs. They're losing wages. It's very, very stressful. My husband spent a couple months at home on half salary. You know, he's in the airline industry and there's just not 
flying right now. So these are the layers of hardship that we're experiencing right now. And you know this about me, I'm not one to buy into cliches about hardship. When people say, oh, God doesn't give you more than you can handle, well, I disagree, because I think a lot of times we get more than we can handle. Or you might hear people say, well, everything happens for a reason. And I think we say that to, to try and feel better, but you know, I don't think everything happens for a reason. I think some things do. I think a lot of things don't. What could possibly be the reason behind a global pandemic? Well, our verse for today has something to say about hardship and making the most of it that actually makes sense, makes sense to me. This letter is written by James, who was the brother of Jesus. I know, right? He became the leader of the church council in Jerusalem. He was like the top guy in the church as it was developing, Jesus' brother. So he wrote a letter and his audience, um, it, scholars are mixed on when this letter was written, but one of the theories is, is it was one of the very first letters, like the earliest letter written in the New Testament, maybe 20 years or so after Jesus' death and resurrection. So he's writing to primarily a Jewish audience, Jewish Christians, and Jewish Christians had a hard time with grace because they were so used to earning God's favor through obedience to the law that the whole Jesus thing about by grace you are saved through faith, that was such a new concept for them. It was hard to let go of. So this is James, excuse me, this is James's audience. And as he writes them, he's very concerned about faith over works, but he doesn't want our works the way we live to get lost in faith. It's like they both matter. We're saved by faith and yet our, our deeds have to match our faith. So that's the, the main tenor of his whole letter. But this is what he says in the very opening of the chapter. He says, consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. I know he actually said that. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. There's no hidden meanings in the words. Joy means joy. Trials means hardship, adversity. He says, consider it joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. This word perseverance, we've talked about this word before. It's the word, Greek word, hupomene. It's such a great word. It means enduring with hope or enduring with joy or suffering with expectation, patiently enduring something with hope. It's a great word. The testing of your faith produces hupomene. And let hupomene finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If you do lack wisdom, oh no, my computer died. It says if you, if you lack wisdom, ask God for it and you will receive what you need. That's what happens when you rely on a computer for your scriptures, right? So this verse, it's not a cliche. It's a very real laying out for people of faith of how to have a perspective on diversity. What's important here is that we notice that it's not God who is testing our faith. It is the adversity. In other words, life is hard and that hardship is going to test your faith. But James says, I want you to hang on to your faith with hope. I want you to patiently endure this hardship with joy because it really is going to make you stronger and wiser and more mature. And if you need help, if you need wisdom, just ask God, he says. Just ask God. So 
there might be a cliche that fits. The cliche being, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. That's kind of what he's saying. Hardships are going to happen. It's real. But we have to make the best of it. We have to endure with hope and with joy, knowing that through this enduring, we are maturing and our faith is maturing and we're finding new ways to trust and rely on God. You know, as I was working on this sermon, I thought about our friends in Zimbabwe. You know that the Presbytery of Denver has a relationship with the Presbytery of Zimbabwe and we have numerous friends there our church is connected to Paul and Lydia Nishangwe, our pastor friends who are over there. Well, things are so bad in Zimbabwe. They were already bad. But the coronavirus ha has just been devastating. And you may know that about three years ago, there was a coup and the awful President Mugabe was overthrown by one of his own cronies, Managaw Managawa, I can't say that right, um, and people are saying he's even worse. Like, it's it's just terrible. Authoritarian rule, rampant graft and corru corruption, plummeting standards of living, teetering economy. I got that out of a news article. And so today, actually Friday, which is the day I'm filming, Friday was going to be a day of nationwide protests against the government. And it got a little scary because we're in, you're in an authoritarian re regime and you want to protest against the government. It could get really ugly and scary. Well, the government took these protests very seriously and they rolled out the troops. I mean, every city was shut down. The streets were empty. The protesters didn't even go out because it was too frightening. And yet they felt they had won a victory because the government took the call to protest so seriously that they got everybody out there to try and nip it in the bud. And I think about our friends there and the depth of their faith. It's striking. It is so striking how people who live with such uncertainty and with so little help can have such a deep and abiding faith in God. They live hupomony every day. They don't lose hope. They try and endure with joy, patiently suffering, knowing that the testing of their faith is going to make them deep and wise. And they are. They are deep and wise. Now, I don't want to minimize what we're experiencing here. Everyone's hardship is it's individual, but there are certainly degrees across the world. You know, we would say here, yes, Colorado's experiencing a drought and we're worried about our water levels. In, in Zimbabwe, they would say, oh yes, we're having a drought too. You know, we turn on our faucets and no water comes out. That, that's the difference of degrees, how severe things are. But the message to us from James is exactly the same. Because to each individual, your personal hardship is your hardship. And what James is saying to us is, I want you to find a way to endure it. Hardship is real. Adversity is going to happen but I want you to make the most of it. I want, I want you to make the most of it and not lose hope, even find ways to endure it with joy, knowing that God is working in you through this. You will be wiser and stronger. And if you need wisdom, all you need to do is ask. This is certainly my hope and prayer for all of us during this pandemic. It is, it's a hard time. People are depressed. People are really tired and weary. It's affecting us on emotional, psychological, and physical levels. So my hope is that 
you are going to discover within you this thing that James is talking about and say to yourself, I can do this. I can suffer through this hardship. I can let it create a strong faith in me. I can let it shape me into someone who's wise and who knows how to live through things. I can suffer with purpose. Oh Lord God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for help and renewal, for wisdom where we need it. Hear our prayer for healing of mind, body, and spirit that we may get through this hard time together without losing hope. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Hi everyone, Jack here. Happy Sunday. Today's praise song is In Christ Alone, so I hope you enjoy it, and here it goes. gather together for the sacrament of communion, each in our own homes, but gathered around the same table, I invite you to say with me our prayer preparation. As we prepare to come to your table, O Lord, we confess that we are in deep need. We are in need of your healing, in need of your forgiveness, in need of your comfort, and in need of your strength. In your mercy, O Lord, set our sights once again on you. Meet us in our places of deepest need. May all we do reveal your claim on us that we might live the new life you promise and share your good news with all. Amen. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper is for all who trust in the name of Jesus. And we gather around the table together remembering our communion with each other and our communion with God. 
And so we remember the words that Jesus said on that last night he spent with his disciples. He took the cup and he said, this new cup is the new covenant that is sealed in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the bread and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. And I invite you as you take the cup to just remember that this is the love of God, which is poured out for you. And the bread is the body of Christ, which was broken for us. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we are grateful that as we meet you here in this sacrament, that you are present with us, that your spirit meets us here to fill us and renew us. And for this, we are so grateful. Amen. Friends, our grateful response to God and all God has given us is our offerings. So as we ponder or give today our offerings to God in our church, our offering prayer is this. Receive our gifts, gracious God. We offer them to you with thanks for all the ways you have provided for us. Amen.
friends receive this benediction. Now may the one who is able to do far more than we ask or even think, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God through Christ our Savior, now and always. Amen.